Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I want to start off by thank you very much on a hopefully a wonderful Friday for you. And that I want to thank you again for sharing your valuable time in learning about Fanville solutions and how they can fit on a campus communication solution. Um, this is going to concentrate primarily around schools, but as you notice, many of the business applications that I can go to could also fit into business applications as well as many other quote unquote campus type applications where you have your own immediate security that actually patrols that particular property. But before I get into the details, I want to do a little bit of house cleaning. Um, uh, the question box that you have on your client side, um, I encourage you to possibly open it up in case you have any questions. I will reserve the last slide to address any particular questions you might have. You might put in questions as you see fit going through the slides and that you could put in the questions and I'll be more than happy to address those questions at the end of this presentation. Um, in addition to that, um, I've also included a soft copy of this presentation in the handouts. Uh, within your client, you should see your handout situation of which there is a PDF version of this soft uh, presentation so that you can download for yourself and actually reference it. So there is no need to kind of take heavy notes or anything like that. So you can download that and just jot down whatever uh, notes that you may pick up uh, moving forward. Uh, with that said, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tommy Lee. I'm the VP of Sales for North America. Although I said uh, good afternoon to you, it's quite early in the morning for me, but this is great. Uh, again, uh, value for your time, and let's go ahead and proceed. One of the things I wanted to stress on is that uh, I've had some, you know, good opportunities to kind of go in, and, uh, and some new schools are actually built because I happened to do a move uh, not too long ago, and many of the new schools that were being built, and some of the established communication infrastructures hasn't changed at all since we moved forward till today. I thought, gee, you know, now that, you know, 10, 20 years later, everybody in, in essence walks around with their smartphone and you figure that would enhance communication. But in essence, for real critical things like fire, uh, you'll notice that lots of new campuses that are being built still has that classic fire alarm that when people pull it, you know, it will call not only the alarm that it warns everybody, but it has a direct connection uh, to the local fire department. I don't know if that happens in your particular region, but I know for here, that is kind of what it does. And I think the real key thing is time is really a commodity when an emergency happens. So I think the idea there is being able to have a direct connection and contacting the right people uh, in time to get these things moving forward. What I intend to talk about in, in moving forward today is several things on the agenda. Uh, what I'm going to do is really go over the education, communication, and security uh, solutions, perhaps show you a diagram on how the vast majority of our solutions can go ahead and fit into the type of endpoints that we end up providing. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, I also talked about opening a question. This is going to become pretty valuable because at the latter part of this presentation, I'm going to go ahead and issue a question of which your right reply to this question will win you a Fanville PA2 gate, uh, gateway. And what that will do is I will provide a little bit of a description on the last uh, slide, and I will throw out a question, and the first person to go on to the question mark and answer it will win that prize, and we'll go ahead and send this to you as a, uh, as a gift, and hopefully you will enjoy it, it, the, the value it brings to your projects. Okay, uh, for those uh, individuals who have joined this webinar and not familiar with Fanville, I always like to start off by showing the specific um, solution series that we tend to offer. And one of the things that Fanville brings to the marketplace for those who, have heard, who haven't heard of Fanville before is the fact that we actually have really three separate categories of solutions. The first thing we have, and I'll mark here, is number one, 
the whole solution of commercial phones. This is really a, quite a big hotbed for us that we go ahead and we're a big, well-accepted phone provider, uh, not only with the Fanville name, but also we provide a huge amount of OEM business. And chances are highly likely that you've gone ahead and actually touched one of our you know, partner brands that are out there that are designed and put together by us in joint, in joint hands with our value partners as well. So we've been in the phone marketplace for a long time and we decided to come out with some very unique offerings that we feel have been really greatly accepted in the marketplace in many of the large PBX manufacturers. Supplementing the commercial phone, we also have a vertical design on number two here to the right-hand side, which really focuses uh, on, on hospitality phones. And when I say hospitality phones, you know, these are designs that you, we have here that you can go ahead and we have phones that have actual displays, which actually makes customization very easy for you. You know, we have ones with actual displays as well as one with the hard plastic templates that people are used to when they go into hotels. Obviously, the great advantage of having displays is that you carry one phone and then you can go ahead and modify the specific hotel logo, the, the specific key codes that you want to, and actually provision that onto the phone automatically. So each you know, phone itself has its own uh, great you know, pros uh, in terms of why you want that specific model. The last series, of course, here is our intercom series. And if you look across our intercom series here, all of these devices, as, as well as our phones, are all SIP endpoints. None of these, uh, these devices are analog in terms of its ability to communicate with whatever uh, hosted situation or on-prem SIP situation you have. All of these communicate in SIP so that they are fully compatible with many of the partners that we've gone out and ran interoperability testing as well as qualification testing. And the good news is that we don't necessarily provide a PBX solution that, that, that is a Fanville. We are purely a SIP endpoint provider. And so that in case, we partner very strongly with many of the strong SIP uh, providers out there. And the way we make ourselves unique is that we also bring along uh, a management interface. And what this management interface does is it allows the installer to be able to upload all the different unique configuration files for our commercial phones, our hospitality phones, as well as a lot of the other devices here so that you can go ahead and really just drive custom configurations as well. You know, So say for example, if you happen to fall within a specific time zone, you don't have to go ahead and manually configure all the different times and everything like that manually for every phone. You can have a set template that you basically deploy in most of your deployments and then roll it out as you see fit. So in that case, you know, time is money when it comes to rolling out these items. And as well, we have also FTPS, which obviously if you've been in the marketplace for a long time, that's our redirection server. And what our redirection server does is it gives you the capability of transferring control when a person plugs in the phone automatically so that either your PBX takes control of provisioning or you can use the FanDuel's management server to go ahead and manage your provisioning as well. So all of those options are provided to you, basically free of charge, and that's a service that we provide to our partners as well. So let's go ahead and move on to you know, education, communication, and security. As I mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of the new infrastructures that are being built, at least here in the States, is you know, on-prem fire uh, alarms. And when you actually take that, and I remember coming into classes, when you have an exam, uh, infrastructure in place coupled with the remedies as well as good training here, both student and staff really have a great idea so that when you know things happen, for me, whether it's earthquakes, uh, fires, or whatever, whatever other emergency, people know exactly where to go to contact the right point of people that can really seek resolution to your issue immediately. And I thought about it. I said, you know, having accidents occur throughout our nation here, people have walked around with smartphones, you figure, oh, that might go ahead and, and actually enhance communication. But what people tend to do in an emergency is they tend to call their loved ones. You know, they call their parents if it's a K through 12 uh, situation, or they happen to call their best friend and tell what's going on. And that's how the news spreads. Well, by that time that happens, 
if they get through, then in essence, the proper authorities tend to be notified or perhaps uh, in essence, campus security. You know, how many out there actually have campus security smart dials on their smartphone so that when something happens, they just dial it one, two, three, so they can have direct connection. This is where we're kind of coming in and we're actually beginning to see some campuses show up with intercom that allow a one button push, very similar to how this fire alarm is, to provide instant access for the people that have direct contact and could really resolute many of the issues that you might be facing today, whether it's a dormitory, hallway, or somewhere outdoor on campus. The great thing as well is when you provide these type of solutions, it also gives you an indication of where you're located. Because as you know, these SIP solutions, when the alarm rings, you could put the specific code that tell you exactly where that alarm is coming from. When somebody calls via a smartphone, you have no clue on where it's coming from, whether it's on campus, off campus, or whether it's coming from a parent's home. You have no clue whatsoever. Again, time is of value when it comes to really simple as well as proper training amongst the campus to know what to do in an emergency situation. So let's just talk about a lot of the different pieces here that we tend to address. You know, I mean, I could couple both video security and intercoming under one solution here. And under this category, you know, Fanville provides uh, different types of solutions with different uh, scenarios, meaning that we have intercoms that have, a, a, a have video and we have intercoms that don't have video. But for the, those that don't have video, we actually can integrate very well with uh, campuses that automatically have cameras that are already in place. And the good news is that many of our devices can supplement those video devices so that if you want to add an interactive section in a, in a spot where there is a camera, you can see a lot of action, but you may not always hear what is going on, nor do you actually have an ability for a student to push a button and be able to provide some sort of alert. Uh, to campus security so that something is going on either on campus, in the parking lot, et cetera, moving forward. As well, broadcasting. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Fanville PA2 also supports broadcasting and be able to be able to provide more multicasting abilities throughout you know, the campus so that you may want to go ahead and diverge an alarm over to either phones or whatever speaker systems you might have throughout your campus. And obviously, as I mentioned, alarm locations, these alarm locations, when the controller actually receives a SIP call from any of these pieces, uh, they actually can tell them exactly where that call is coming from so that they can isolate exactly where that problem is. Obviously, phone calls are very straightforward. You know, every classroom typically has a phone call, uh, a phone in it to be able to provide interactive things, but they tend to fall short in terms of providing alarms, you know, going overcoming many of the uh, sound uh, obstacles that you might find in the classroom. So let's talk about, you know, solution diagrams moving forward. And in the solution diagrams, this might be a, um, a diagram that's going to have different selections for different types of rooms. In the case of a multimedia room, we have Thing, we have intercom devices that are quite frankly, when you compare them to phones, um, they are even better value because they in essence cost less from a value to what you would provide and can provide a really simple one button access to establish quick interactive video or audio communication. That even stems from a basic I-10 interface here all the way to our outdoor uh, ruggedized video with even key cards and key codes as well. And in this situation, it all depends on what atmosphere you wanna go ahead and place these endpoints on. And we have them ranging from all different sorts and different features so that it, it, we have something that will in essence match your situation and where you wanna go ahead and put these things into. Beyond the triggering devices here, we also have uh, monitoring devices here. We have our X210 series coupled with our Android series as well. We have our X7 or X7As that we came out with uh, within the last month, and they should be existing in your channels today. And both of these really provide a great monitoring tool. And as you know, as some future slides moving forward, most security places have multiple cameras throughout all of their rooms. Well, in many cases in, in, in campuses, 
the level of monitoring doesn't have to be real time. It has to, they have to respond when they get an actual call when it comes in. And the great news is that a lot of this can be covered by either a button interface and having a lot of the, the video displayed in VGA quality on this screen or on a much larger screen here over a touch screen. And these are all the different variances that people can choose depending on what their requirements are for that particular project. Obviously, we have phones, but one of the things we want to introduce as well is in the classroom, we have an IW30 SIP speakerphone. You know, the SIP speakerphone is great in terms of having a phone, but what do you do in a cafeteria environment or perhaps in an auditorium on your particular campus where the phone is great if you're within 10 or 15 feet, you might be able to hear the ring, but what do you do when you go ahead and want to make an announcement? You know, we actually provide a SIP-based uh, speaker that's housed for really an indoor use so that you can dial that extension or the multicast system provided by the PA2 can make an announcement that will broadcast throughout all the campuses on the speaker system itself. And as you see here, there's lots of groups of different types of categories that we have here, where we have everything from alarm kiosk to address outdoor scenarios. And if you notice right on top of here, there's an existing camera. Many kiosks may only be built for a camera. And what you can do is supplement that by putting in an audio intercom as well as a trigger enabling a student not only to passively monitor, but to be able to trigger a warning should something happen within that immediate area. Okay. Let's go on and move to the next slide. Now let's look at the public area scenario. In the public area scenario outside, as I mentioned earlier, this is kind of a, a larger breakout, as I mentioned earlier. There's lots of different pieces where you can actually call where you have this endpoint device here that can contact a host device and as well could be integrated to a camera. And you see a one button device here, but we even have devices where you can have two separate type of buttons. One could be, you know, red color coded, the other one could be blue color coded, depending on what could be calling for campus security or the red one can call, you know, the, the local authorities directly. So it really depends on which one you want to interact with. And so it gives really you that ability to provide that level of, of flexibility, uh, coupled along with proper training. Uh, you know, this coupled with speaker systems really adds a great ability to provide alarming as well as being able to alert, you know, everyone on campus or on your business campus uh, real time in, 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 in providing emergency help to wherever you need to. Here's an example here where you look at this IW30 in the classroom, and you see it that it's also supplementing a lot of the monitoring. Now, we know here in the States, many teachers have, a, have an issue having a private camera being on or off. Again, you know, every region has its different privacy concerns in terms of what you want to do. But, you know, what schools can do is to put these type of monitoring systems in a hallway, perhaps, that be able to provide, you know, good and passive um, uh, monitoring where it's allowed and where people feel comfortable with. Um, very often, uh, one of the unique items about the video capability is that a lot of the the SNOM, uh, not the SNOM, the, the handbill uh, endpoints actually give uh, the ability to to look at uh, these cameras in a in a passive. Uh, video preview. And what that means is that you can actually see the video in advance before a SIP call has happened. So if you wanted to see what was going on in the third floor of this building, you can actually flick it on, turn on the camera and actually see what's actually going on and seeing if there is anything happening. And that is really valuable when it comes to emergency scenarios. We could talk about dormitories. Again, with dormitories, you can output a lot of these intercom I-10s within each of the dormitory rooms or you could put something like this on the outdoor or indoor, giving you an idea or in the hallway, seeing, seeing, giving you visibility instantly as to where the emergency case is coming along. Coupled with a lot of this is really an RFID uh, interface where you can go ahead and actually pass a key through. So that it also provides passive security as well. Many of these uh, access units can enable students or any business worker to pass along an RF key and have that automatically open up a mad door so that again, I think in this germophobic environment that we're in, it could provide a touch-free interface so that you could just enter in and leave your dorm without 
necessarily having any issues. I'm touching common doorknobs, which is a big spreader of germs and everything like that. But it also provides a level of security and some interactiveness in terms of getting a hold of who's responsible for providing proper access. Now we talk about the monitoring center. You know, a lot of uh, campuses that I've talked about earlier actually have lots of um, um, TVs and monitors here. This is probably way overboard for many of the campus scenarios, or maybe even in a, in a multi-dwelling unit. As I mentioned, many dormitories are like multi-dwelling units where you have somebody monitoring that one case and they just want to be there in case something happens. You know, that could be done via our phone. And with the X210 that we have here, uh, this is something that can provide a good interface with good buttons enabling you to be able to go ahead and monitor different buildings and different scenarios. If something calls in, you can actually activate the video and see what's actually going on in that case and, engage, and engaging in a call if, if, if the alarm so calls it. And in the X7A below here, you actually will be able to do it via touchscreen. And you could also supplement it with a camera so that you have the ability to have interactive video call if the other side happens to have that as well. Uh, if you happen to spend a lot of time using the speakerphone versus using the handset, we actually have an X210 that has a gooseneck microphone. This is the X210i, so that it provides really isolated voice. You know, very often when you're in a loud campus community, you don't want the speakerphone, which has been designed to grab sound from everywhere. But if you want it localized to your voice only, you, you may benefit from having a specific model that's designed for one person broadcasting use. And a little bit closer look at the monitoring interface for the X7A model. This is kind of a model what happens with one push of a key button. You'll have lots of different um, uh, buttons here that you can press on a speed dial and passively monitor different cameras as well as, uh, I, at least I, I could speak for you know, the Fanville uh, intercoms with cameras as well to see where that video was going on, if there's any activity going on within that specific hallway or that campus area. And you could as well be engaged in a call and tell you exactly where that call is coming from. But it gives you that capability of being able to go through your campus and seeing where things are. Uh, this obviously is our main core uh, commercial phone. This is the XU series. And this series was just released by, in January 2020. It starts everywhere from our X3 covering really the basic needs, as well as going all the way up to the X6U, which has the only model that has an included VGA decoder that enables you to go ahead and monitor a lot of the video uh, broadcasts out there and see what's going on on the screen on the VGA quality. The really great unique design about this is it has all of the different what we call key features. All of these devices have Gig E. They all support PoE. They all support Opus Codec if you have a low bandwidth scenario. But in addition to that, we also have separated windows in color for both SIP accounts as well as uh, many BLF keys here that allow you to go ahead and access all of these different functions, not only just speed dials, but you could use them to go ahead and monitor different camera functions will be able to set off whatever action URLs that you have planned. And they have different models which have integrated Bluetooth and just integrating the Bluetooth onto the phone with the X5U, that saves you a, a, an additional $25 or what have you equivalent on integrating to the phone. It's already part of the phone, but you can go ahead and monitor a lot of the SIP calls on this feature and never ever bother the BLF keys that you have allocated on the side. And that really provides a very productive interface for many of the end users uh, that use our series. So I highly encourage you to really look at our new series and just isolate where you want to go, divide it into four separate models. And likely, it will be able to address many of the needs that you see moving forward. Now, in our SIP door phones, we have everything ranging from indoor uh, door phones here, which have cameras as well as no cameras. And both of these have the ability to support RFID, IC card, or even a key code uh, passing so that if you have it and it goes through, you can actually go through and actually have relays inside these things being able to set off mag door locks. 
Many of you may actually experience this when you go into a shopping center and when you approach a door carrying bags in your hands, the door automatically opens. Well, that's an open access. If you wanna provide closed security, you can actually have someone put in a key code or do this and then the net result is the same as well. And one thing that I didn't show here is that it also has the ability to show the I-10, which is really a low cost individual uh, uh, intercom, which gives you the ability to show uh, you know, one button press. Here it is right here in the I-10, and you see it just in one button here. There's actually versions with two buttons, without video, with video, just in this series alone. So these are just a partial picture of the different types of intercom features that we actually have. So we have one button, two button, with video, without video, for commercial use here, and as well as outdoor ruggedized used here. So it really depends on Again, your application and your ability to want to put on the alarm specific for your particular application. Many people who upgrade phones today, they look at, gee, you know, what do I do when I have to, when they have a, a PA system or other systems? Well, these type of endpoints gives you the ability to address a much larger marketplace and you don't necessarily have to leave it to somebody else to have to address that piece. This gives you the ability to expand your portfolio so that you can provide a wider set of solutions into the marketplace. As I mentioned earlier, this is gonna be a brief presentation. This is our last uh, presentation as well, slide uh, presentation where the Fanville PA2 is really a box that enables you to enable any interface that was designed under an analog or perhaps a digital interface in the past to be adaptable to SIP. What does that really mean? Well, things like PA systems, which is very, very popular in campuses, you may also find this available in hospitals as well in many other business areas. And you say, gee, you know, I have a working amplifier and speaker. How do I go ahead and make that, you know, compatible with the new SIP environment that we're bringing in? Well, here is what it is with this PA2, you can actually assign an extension onto this PA2 and it can go ahead and drive that amplifier, which then will drive a whole network of speakers that will host that specific area. And it also has the ability to also drive uh, its own unique speaker and maybe in a front gate environment as well. So it could scale from a small unit to a much larger unit environment. Beyond just PA speakers, it can also enable multicasting abilities so that you could put in an extension and then with that extension and any calls to that extension can be sent to a multicast address that allows you to send multicast uh, announcements throughout that branch office or on that campus, depending on what you wanna do. These are great little features that will be able to provide you with that ability to bring that tool in for it, okay? And last but not least, out of all those solutions, we have a, a management system that allows you to be able to go ahead and, and manage all of these devices under one interface. This gives you the capability of having a single interface to upload specific configuration files to our phones, uh, to the PA2, as well as a lot of our intercoms that are out there, okay? And that really ties it all in because many integrators actually work with PBX uh, engines that have provisioning. If that's the case, then all you need is our redirection that points to your PBX unit, and that would work fine. In cases where you don't have a provisioning unit, you might be able to consider this device management system as one of those tools to allow you to deploy multiple phones within a campus environment in a much faster scenario. Now, let's just talk about the prize giveaway. As I mentioned earlier on this uh, uh, presentation, and for those who really want a soft copy, for many of those who came in late, uh, we have a handout section that allows you to download a soft copy of this presentation for your own reference. Look at the handout section in your GoToWebinar client, and you'll be able to download that. And one part of this prize giveaway is on your question box that, you, that I asked you to open earlier, you can go ahead and be ready to answer a question. Because what I'm going to show you on the next slide is being able to ask you one question and the correct, the first correct answer to that question is gonna be the winner of this particular PA2. And what we're gonna do is ask that winner to send 
um, either me, uh, which is tommy.lee at vandal.com or to sales at vandal.com. It really depends on who you want to do it. Indicate on the subject, Vandal winner. And we'll go ahead along with your contact information so that we'll go ahead and send this gateway over to you. So I'll give you about five seconds to be able to open up a uh, your question box. And hopefully by then, uh, we'll give you the ability to entertain the questions for those who are interested in winning this box. Okay, so I'll go four, three, two, one. The question is, whoops, hang on just a moment. What model number is Fanville's latest Android phone? If you happen to know the answer of the Android latest uh, uh, Android phone, then if you put that answer, you'll be the first one to be able to uh, gain access and have the PA2 sent to you. So for those who uh, are familiar with it, anybody who wants to put in an answer, I'll wait for it. Ah, great, great, I'm getting answers here. Okay, the first one across the line uh, is Alexander Kivik. Kivich or Kivik. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. You are the winner of the PA2. So what I ask you to do is send a quick email to sales at fanville.com with the subject line uh, webinar winner or something like winner so that we can pin out your message along with your contact information and we'll go ahead and arrange to have uh, this Fandle PA2 sent to you. So with that said, congratulations to you, uh, Alexander. I'll, I'll go ahead and have that uh, delivered to you. And as we move on forward, I just wanna show you some of the nice tools that we have in place, as well as open up to the questions and answer section. As I said, for sales at Fandle.com and for anybody who has technical support, I highly suggest you contact your local Fanville uh, representative, as well as being able to provide email to support at fanville.com. And as well, we also provided lots of tools. If you know, uh, Fanville has put together lots and lots of videos, either through YouTube or something like that, that gives you the ability to do things like basic configuration, how to put in a, a Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi dongle onto our phones, as well as even arranging for auto provisioning. If you go to this section right here, this gives you a video that, that provides you with an idea of upfront. What a lot of service providers do is get a compilation of a lot of these things on how to go ahead and initiate conference calls, how to do a transfer and send it to their customers as opposed to putting together a user manual. Because let's face it, a lot of people don't like reading manuals but they are willing to set aside two or three minutes to look at a very simple video that gives them a really quick tutorial on how to do specific functions. So I suggest you explore these video things and now I'll open up to questions and answer section. Now, some people have gone and done in. One of the first questions is how to become a reseller. That's a fantastic question. Uh, you could do several things. Most of our regions out there have a Fanville representative responsible for your region. What I suggest you do, if you don't know who that person is, send your contact information to sales at fanville.com, indicate who you are, what region, and what you're interested in, and we'll go ahead and do the forwarding to the right person so that that person will be able to assign the right contact to you. If you even want to go further, you can actually go to our website on our partner site and be able to register as a partner, and that will automatically get you in on our partner website so that you get an updated idea on our newsletters and any news updates that you might end up getting. Coupled with that, we have um, distribution partners that are scattered throughout globally throughout this world. And that's how we end up selling our solutions to the marketplace. If you happen to be a value-added reseller or a service provider, then you can go ahead and do that, contact our distributor, register on our website, and that is it. Um, you know, we're not, we're a very simple, you know, company to work with. There isn't any type of pre-certification yet. I mean, for those who want to dig a little bit deeper and want to know a little bit more, either myself or many other people within Fanville is more than happy to work with you and provide any sort of one-on-one -on -one webinar training so that you can go into a deeper dive in understanding any specifics of, of our solutions. 
One person asked as well, why is there a camera in the I-10V? How can I use this camera? Well, the I-10V is really a basic thing. Now, you could order the I-10V without a camera because you don't want necessarily to have video present in any of the different locations, but because you want sort of a simple solution. Now, take, for example, I've walked into many small offices that have a phone in the front desk that says, please contact reception. Well, a great alternative to that is also being able to provide a simple box. And then you ask yourself, what extension is the, is the uh, person who, who wants to greet at the door? Just provide one simple button and that video camera can also be uh, that interface so that you can see who is at the door, you know, before you actually let them in. Do they look like unwelcome strangers or is it a solicitor? Is it somebody else? Nobody knows, but <clears throat> sorry for my, for my voice. But that gives you the ability to kind of see who is at that door before they actually walk in. Um, those are the two questions that are raised so far. Um, if there's any more that follows, I'll be more than happy to address it. I'm here for you. If you happen to come up with a question beyond the reach of this webinar, feel free to go ahead and send uh, any inquiry to sales or support at fanville.com and we'll be more than happy to address any questions that you might have on our solutions. Here's another one that came in, I guess, in which, in which iPhone can I see the picture from the i10V? Well, you know, I think that depends from an iPhone perspective uh let me see i think if, if if the if the i10v has a camera that camera is an ip picture you might want to look at any specific you know uh in an i10v you would have to pick an application that may be able to view that specific camera i'm not overly familiar since i happen to be kind of an android person myself but i think in the case of 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 like a lot of commercial things out there for security, there are there are applications that allow you to go ahead and look at uh, phone security itself and, and 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 these different interfaces. So there's an interface that doesn't go directly in the iPhone, but what you want to do is look at an application that has access to any of the videos on our i10, and then be able to use that as a remote branch. I don't know what what specific you know. Uh, Office for is for, for for an iPhone application. That's something that I may have to pursue on a on a set of a thing. Uh, which Fanvil phone is not a phone? Well, the phone from a Fanvil's perspective, we like you to go ahead and consider the commercial phones, primarily the X7, which is what you see here, the X7A, which is a great uh, phone that you see. In terms of our core products. We look at the X6U. The X6U is actually a desk phone that has a VGA monitor that gives you direct connection that, that provides you with the ability to see up to like 30 frames per second video from either the i10 or any of the higher end interactive uh, phones that are out there. Okay, so I hope that addresses most of your questions. Sorry, I couldn't be more direct on your specific iPhone, but what I can do is that if you come up, follow up with me and send me a note, I'll be more than happy to dig a little bit further with our group to see what type of solutions that are out there, okay, that will might help fit your scenario. Again, I want to thank you very much for your time. And since this is a weekend, I hope you have a very healthy and safe weekend out there and enjoy your life. And any questions beyond, please send us a note. We'll be more than happy to support your business. Again, have a great one. And again, thank you for your time. Bye-bye.